You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host, and today I have Shane O'Brien from the City Planning Department. Welcome, Shane. Good to see you. Nice to see you as well. You guys are doing great things. Uh, Brockton is looking good, Thank uh, you. but we want it to look a little more green. Correct? Especially in the downtown area, yes. Okay. Um, being in the downtown area, this building at, at Brockton Community Access, um, our green space is kind of the lower parking lot with the trees, which I have fought since I got here to keep. Mm -hmm. Okay. It would be nice to put another deck on and have more parking, but then the trees would be gone. Absolutely. I have a little strip of land in the parking lot and then off to the side on the Court Street side because I'm on the corner of Court, Pleasant, Main, and North Main. What are you guys trying to do and, and actually you guys are trying to involve the community in what you're trying to do it's not just a top down we're going to decide what goes on we right. want the community involved right um, we had our first meeting for the uh, our we're calling it the downtown Brockton green space plan we're working with uh, the Conway School of Landscape Design um, they worked with us previously for our Brockton urban agriculture plan um, we have three different students uh, this time it's uh, Sunny Amanda and the last name I'm sorry I should have known. See, that's Emmy. Right. Emmy. Emmy. Okay. Emmy. Can't forget Emmy. Um, but we had our first meeting January 30th um, at the library, and we got a lot of good ideas where we're looking at the parks that we currently have right now. We're looking at City Hall Plaza. We're looking at the new Tartaglia Park. We're looking at um, Perkins Park and other opportunities in the area and how we can kind of, you know, Brockton's downtown you kind of if you go on google map and you kind of zoom in zoom in zoom in you can kind of get an idea of where brockton is because we're very we're kind of this big impervious area and mm -hmm. you know we have the new dcr tree program that's going on where we're trying to green up uh downtown and south of downtown where we're looking to kind of take some of this impervious surface areas and kind of create some more green space and more you know liveliness kind of in the downtown right now because we do have areas in the downtown but they're really not connected with one another you have to kind of walk through concrete and kind of walk through the sidewalks to get to these areas right we uh we didn't have the luxury at the time of having frederick law olmstead do a, do a green way a greenscape or anything and if you look at boston it's evolved you mm -hmm. have the rose kennedy greenway okay mm -hmm. when they took down the central artery and not as big as that, no, obviously, no, but of course not. we don't want to be the concrete jungle. We want to have downtown. We want to have green. We want to have trees. Mm -hmm. want to have, um, you know, just livable, breathable spaces. And I know when they build the parking garage behind the new development over there, there's like a nice strip of green right now. Mm -hmm. Who knows what's going to happen when the garage goes That's up. That's part of the consideration of the plan as well. Yeah, and if you look downtown Legion Parkway, nice brickwork, mm -hmm. but no green. Are well, you, historically, it's always been this big brickwork sort of parking, not parking lot per se, but this kind of parkway where people park, whereas right. the ideal definition of parkway is this green sort of area. So it's also looking at potentially Legion Parkway down the road is, you know, there's so much space right there where sure. what could happen kind of in the future of Legion, Legion Parkway and kind of, you know, go away from that aspect of that concrete and kind of add a little bit of touches there. But well, you can call it a parkway with parking cars. You can call it a parkway with green space. It's an automotive parkway currently. There you go. But we can transition at some point. I think so. And if you look at, there's little pockets all over the place, like over on Warren Ave, over near the Boys and Girls Club, mm -hmm. that corner of Warren Ave near Belmont was made into a park years ago mm -hmm. when they did some development. Now you have like the DA's office moving in downtown. There's a little strip between the parking garage right. and there's the the VFW park that's on the other side of the city hall plaza mm -hmm. that's kind of been sitting there for years. And then you and I were mentioning before we started recording about behind the old bat terminal that is behind the Ganley building that's going to be redeveloped. So yes, um, we've, we've been calling it Sycamore Grove because of the sycamore trees sycamore there. But, Grove, okay. you know, it's creating kind of an ideal area back there where, you know, we've just redid City Hall Plaza about two years ago. But like we were saying before, this kind of walk from if I want to go from City Hall Plaza to the library, you kind of go through the Sycamore Grove area and then you kind of walk through the parking lot to the library where, you know, we have to take these major attractions within the city and kind of link them together through green space. So if you're not taking that 
walkable Main Street corridor currently right now, you want to be able to go on these outskirts and these green areas. And you also ideally want to feel safe sure. in these areas as well. And people ideally feel safer in these green areas. And you have areas. more residential downtown than you used to have. Yes. With, so With the, the whole development of Enzo Flats mm -hmm. and that whole area and uh, um, station lofts right. over there. So green to go along with that, I think people would appreciate. Yeah, with more people downtown and West Elm Street being just redone too, you have this nice walkable and bikeable corridor going into the downtown where people within the city from the west side can go into the city and enjoy these green spaces you know there's ideally snow park right there as well so but we want to connect these larger park areas to kind of these smaller park areas that we can kind of create within the downtown because we don't have a lot of large spaces in downtown to create these massive parks that other cities may have but we can create these small pocket areas that can be connected. We have a small downtown. It's not a big downtown. I always right. kind of, you know, you, you wonder, and it's happening now, but before for years it kind of sat dormant. I mean, there's all these empty buildings and stuff like that, and you guys are breathing life into them. Mm -hmm. So did you get any good ideas from the public at the meeting on the, the, the 30th? We did. That you we, can share. Uh, sure. We had, a, we had a good group of people there. We had... Um, a lot of ideas in terms of solutions you know ideally some of the solutions were on the city's end to you know acquire this property or take care of this property or use different things that were there to reuse them again but it's a, lo a lot of the ideas that came out of it is to be using the parks as you know do these place making efforts with these parks you know ideally you know with city hall plaza have you know there's currently the movie nights that are there during the summertime but kind of throughout the rest of the year, other than the farmer's market, there's really nothing really going on with the plaza. So it's having these th things and events in these park spaces to activate them because some people not necessarily be using kind of the Sycamore Grove area or kind of Tartaglia Park. You know, some of them are passive parks, but maybe if there's more events in these areas, maybe hosted by the city or other groups, or let them be aware of what's happening in these different areas, that more ideally people will come there. So the next meeting we're looking at on, what's the date? We have uh, Tuesday, February 27th, hopefully no snow, mm -hmm. 6 o'clock to 7.30 at the uh, Brockton Main Library. Okay, and that's open to any member of the public. It, it doesn't, you don't have to live in the downtown area. No, you could you work in the work downtown just, area, but the downtown's the core, so you want to see the core be healthy. Right, and coming out of our downtown action strategy is was looking into the downtown. So we're kind of looking right now in the downtown focusing on this different areas. You know, we had our comprehensive plan where we were looking at the entirety of the city, but we're kind of going back to that downtown action strategy where we're kind of focusing on this one aspect of the green space in that area. Well, you tie it all together. You talked about the bike trails. They mm -hmm. redid Center Street. You can see the, 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 the bike, the bike way, is mm -hmm. that what it's called? Uh, yeah, bike lane, bike way. Okay. So last minute, if, is there any contact information you might want to give out in case people want to know more info before the meeting? Sure, they can always contact us at the planning department, 508-580-7113, or email planning at cobma.us, or they can check out our Facebook page, Downtown uh, Brockton Green Space Plan, and we also have a link from the, uh, the notes from the last meeting at our ablueprintforbrockton.com website. So it's all there, and it's nobody can say anybody's doing a plan behind closed doors in the dark. It's all public. You want the public input, and Absolutely. you want them to participate. Of course. Well, thanks for you doing what you're doing. And, Thank and, you for having and, me. And uh, Rob May and Pam over there in the yeah, planning they, we, department. They do you it all, a, yes. a good group. Yes. Thanks for joining us. No problem. Thank you, Mark. You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Linda, your host. Stay tuned for more events, places, people, and faces right here in the City of Champions.